the alarm clock. Simca, wake Tom Thomas up. Tom Thomas, get up! Tom Thomas! <laughs> hey, you'll be late for school. Tom Thomas, get up already! Uh, uh. This is really something. And where's the battery in here? No, this is an old mechanical alarm clock. It doesn't work with a battery. It uses a spring. How's that work? People wind up the spring tightly. And then as it slowly unwinds, it turns the gears which turn the hands of the clock. Uh, uh, achoo! Uh, oh! What? The alarm clock broke. Uh, Let's hurry and get you washed up. Tom Thomas, are you just getting up? Dad, the alarm clock didn't go off. It's broken. Here's the problem. It won't turn because the feather's stuck in the gears. Nolik, help me. Uh, uh. Papa, what's going on? It looks like it's an earthquake. Huh, it really is broken. Bad time to throw out this old piece of junk. Tom Thomas, I'm off to work. Don't be late for school. I won't. Where are we? In the trash can. And what's gonna happen to us? Well, you see, Nolik. People throw out broken things without a second thought. Even appliances that can still be fixed end up in the trash all the time. And the trash is taken to a horrible, deadly place called the dump. If a fixie happens to be inside a broken appliance, he will come face to face with great danger. Once, my uncle got thrown into the dump buried inside an old TV. He barely managed to jump out of the bulldozer's path, and it was a miracle he didn't end up in the incinerator. After that, he just roamed around the huge dump, trying to fix anything. He became totally crazed. Whew. Good thing the Fixie Rescue Squad managed to find him and bring him back home. I don't want to scare you, but we might be taken to the dump, my boy. Papa, I'm scared. Huh. Where is the alarm clock? Maybe my dad took it to get fixed. <gasps> but Nolik and Papoose are in there. Now just a little bit further. I don't want to go to the dump. No tears. There's only one way out of here. We need to fix the clock and make it ring. But how? Inside the clock, there is the main spring, and there's also a second spring. The second spring is held still by a break, and so it waits. When the little hand reaches the time the alarm was set to go off, the spring jumps off the break, and the gears are free to start turning. That makes a little hammer beat the cup of a bell very, very quickly. And that's how an alarm clock rings. So this feather is stopping the gears and not letting the hammer strike the bell. Exactly. I'll start rocking the gear back and forth and you tug it. And one. Ah! And two. And three. Tadish! Simka, I think I can hear my alarm ringing. Run to the sound, quickly! Uh-huh. Someone turned the alarm off. Whoa! And here comes that earthquake again! Nolik! Nolik! I'm here! Nolik! We fixed the alarm clock! So what 
was wrong with it? A feather got jammed in the gears. And how could a feather get in a clock? Oh, it's probably from when I put the alarm clock under my pillow, so it wouldn't wake me up. Huh, so you mean because somebody doesn't like to get up in the morning, we almost ended up at the dump? By the way, if that somebody doesn't hurry off to his school soon, he'll be late. Oh, you're right, huh? They need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you need a picture, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a picture, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The suction cup. <laughs> Where's Professor Eugenius? Did you see him? Not yet. Strange. He told me he'd be here today to conduct some tests. Rampus, right here under the glass. There's a note. Hmm. Dear friends. That means the note's for us. That's because Professor Eugenius can always count on us. I'm off for a conference today. So what should we do? While I'm away, please keep an eye on each of my tests. There's the wristwatch. And where is it? It's right there. Look! How come the watch is in the water? So the fish can know what time it is? No, look, don't be silly. This is the test he made for the watch. You see? It says water resistant right there on the back. That means that water shouldn't get inside of it. I see. So the professor needs to check if it will work underwater. Understand? I, yep, I got it. The watch is working. So now, the doorbell test. We'll go look. It's over there. What's that thing doing? It tests the button to see how fast it wears out. To check the quality of appliances, toys, sporting goods, or just about anything, they need to undergo serious testing. Take, for instance, telephones. They need to be tested with both heat and cold because they have to work in places as hot as Africa and as cold as the Arctic. Computers are tested to make sure they can be shaken and rocked, too. That way you can be sure they'll work on a desk at home or outside in the park or while you're taking a ride. Different kinds of products need different kinds of durability tests. For example, athletic shoes and car tires are rubbed and squeezed over and over to see how long they are going to last. Yes, testing's very important. Without testing, a machine or appliance could let you down at the very worst moment. If guests come to visit once a week, and once every month, a hooligan comes, pushes the doorbell, and runs. Then I figure this doorbell will last right around 400 years. That's long. The doorbell is still working. That's very good. And also, uh... What? I don't know. We need to turn the note over to read the end. But how? Oh, raise the glass, that's all. Hup, hup, hup. We should find a suction cup. A suction cup? <laughs> suction cups are made out of rubber or other elastic materials. When a suction cup is pressed against a smooth surface, the air inside is squeezed out. The air outside wants to get back in, and so it pushes down on the cup. The rubber edge of the cup won't let the air leak in, so the outside air keeps pressing down and the cup keeps on sticking. And that's how a suction cup sticks to a surface by using the power of air. Wait a minute. I know where there's a really big suction cup that we can use. <gasps> that's 
a huge suction cup, Nolik. Diddies, diddies, diddies. Well done, Nolik. Only we need to hurry before air gets under this suction cup and it unsticks. My suction cup will never unstick. Well, let's see what it says here. Simka, you'd better hurry. And make sure nothing gets broken here in the laboratory while I'm away. Huh, and what could get broken around here? Ah, the glass, look out! Yeah, so much for that. And who's going to clean up all this broken glass? <laughs> you don't know? Nolik! He told us to use that suction cup. No, Simka! She was reading way too slow. Listen, there's no need to fight. I came up with the idea of the suction cup. I should clean this. Come on now, Grampus. We'll clean up this mess. Professor, <clears throat> I still think the suction cup was a great idea. Toasters, MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. The string lights. We're almost all done. Yeah. Now Santa Claus is gonna come over. He'll say, one, two, three. Lights light up the tree. Then we'll get our presents. The real Santa Claus? Yeah, for sure. The real Santa Claus will come to you? You'll see for yourself. He comes to me every year. Okay, so let's practice. One, two, three! Lights light up the tree! Huh? Oh, the string lights burned out. And we don't have another one. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is almost here. Is the tree ready? No, not quite yet. Oh no, oh no. What are we gonna do? I'll be right back. Tom Thomas, what do you think? Will Santa Claus give you any presents if there aren't any lights on the tree? No way. It's not right without the light. It just wouldn't be magical. Papus! Masia! Santa Claus is about to come to Tom Thomas, but the string lights on the tree, they all burned out. They all burned out? Really? The bulbs in a string light are connected together like a chain with a piece of wire between each bulb. When you turn on a string light, electricity flows through the wire, lighting up each of the bulbs along its way. But if any of the bulbs gets burned out, the circuit will be broken and the electricity will stop flowing. That means one bad bulb will make all of the lights go out. So if you want to fix a string light with a bad bulb, the answer is really simple. Just find the bad one and put a new one in. So, do we have a spare bulb around here? I'll get it for you. I know where it is. Tom Thomas, hold up Santa Claus for a while. We need a little time to find and replace that bad light for you. I'll try to. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is already here. Ho, ho, ho! I got one thing to do. So? Let's find the bad bulb. Okay, Papoose, let's go. Hmm, this one's working. Maybe this one burned out. Nope. And that? If light's fine. Santa Claus is getting very hot out here. Hold on. Simka, what's up? We checked all the bulbs, but couldn't find a bad one. Huh, I guess this year won't be magical. Okay, Mom, just come on in. Ho, ho, ho! Hello there, Tom Thomas. So tell me now, have you been good all year? Huh, why aren't the lights on the tree burning? So then let's say it together. One, two, three! Ow! Papoose, I found one more bulb! Here's the one that's not working. One, One, two, two three. three! 
Light, light up, up the, the tree. tree! Huh! Now we need to replace this bulb with a new one. So where's Masia? Show your light, O oh tree! Hooray! Hooray! Ho, 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 ho! Ooh, that was really hard. I see you already got it shining. But where did you manage to find a new bulb? We got Papus to act as the bulb. <gasps> Tidish! Tidish! Ah, uh, what a hero. Pull me up so we can put this bulb in. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. Our spirits light up. Whoa! And on the tree. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! And on the tree. Ah, Eve. nice box. The lights were brighter. Mwah. Every year when no one is expecting From some place that no one could conceive Appears a little miracle before us Every year on Christmas Eve 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 The clock it seems On Christmas Eve Is ticking slower and suddenly, on Christmas Eve, a miracle, on Christmas Eve, no one believes, on Christmas Eve, comes out of nowhere. Every year, but no one is expecting, from some place that no one could conceive. Yeah! A little miracle before Whoa. us. Every year, on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Eve, the clock ticks slower. The mirror. Hi there, Tom Thomas. Why has this mirror been standing here in the hallway for a whole week already? My dad can't seem to find any time to hang it on the wall. Are you sure it won't fall? It hasn't fallen so far. <laughs> so, Nolik, do I look like Spider-Man? <laughs> ah! No, you don't look like him at all. Yeah. Hey, you can't climb on walls like Spider-Man. Yeah, I'm sure you can do it. I can do it. Just give your chewing gum to me. See that? Like in the movie. Oh, like that's really hard. Just keep watching. That's hard. Feast your eyes and see what the only spider fixie in the whole wide world can do. could see their reflection was to look into water. The very first mirrors appeared about 5,000 years ago. They were made out of silver or bronze. Legend has it that the Greek scientist Archimedes once burned down an entire enemy fleet with the help of mirrors like these. But humans only became able to see their reflections well after they started making mirrors out of glass. And we still use glass mirrors today. But of course, mirrors are not only used for looking at our reflections. They are also used in telescopes to collect the light of 
distant stars. And humans also use mirrors inside of automobile headlights so they will shine even brighter. Just look at all the things mirrors can do for you. Whew. Looks like it didn't break. Help me lift it so we can lean it back up on the wall. <gasps> Tom Thomas! I've gotten a reflection in the mirror. That's impossible, because only vampires can't see their reflections. Or ghosts. But I'm not in there! So then, I guess you've become a ghost. <laughs> no, not a ghost! I don't like them! Hey, what's all the racket? Did you guys get yourself into trouble again? Suka! Me and Tom Thomas were playing Spider-Man, and I... I turned into a ghost for some reason. Yeah, a ghost. <laughs> That's silly. They don't even exist. Oh, you don't have any reflection either. Simka, you're a ghost just like I am. <gasps> That's just goofy. Look, just look, here I am. Well, hi there. But why couldn't I see myself over here? It's probably because the mirror is scratched on the back. Tom Thomas, do you think you can rotate the mirror? It's just like I said. Some of the special coating got scraped off of the back. A mirror is not just a piece of plain glass. Plain glass lets light pass through it. But a mirror reflects light. To turn a piece of glass into a mirror, people spray a special shiny coating on one of its sides that reflects everything. And then to protect the shiny coating, an extra layer of paint is put on top of it. But even with that protection, you still have to handle mirrors carefully. Because mirrors can easily scratch or even break! And do you think that this one is possible to fix? Yeah, we can do it! It's a good thing you have a pack of mat with you! I thought we might need it after you started screaming over here. Don't tell me you've got paint in there for a mirror. A pack of mats got everything you'll ever need. It's all ready. <gasps> My dad's coming. Tom Thomas. What are you doing here? Checking if you hung it. Yeah, right. I'll definitely hang that mirror on the wall soon. Hmm, like tomorrow. Or next week. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out.